Rise and shine, wild ones. It's Bernadette. I am here with your Pick a Card Daily Tarot reading for Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. And wow, you might want to grab something and have a seat and just make sure you're in a quiet space and you're ready to receive because today's card is powerful, like powerful. So today's um, video might go a little longer than normal. So, ta-da! On this auspicious Tuesday, Spider as a High Priestess has come uh, to present herself. And um, for those of you that have written in, uh, a lot of you, I was really surprised. It's very cool. Thank you. You are coming to see these daily readings as also teachings about tarot card meanings because I do go into what that traditional tarot card and the Rider Waite deck means um, because that's what I read with. So, I read with my own award-winning Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck which is based on the Rider Waite deck, and then, of course, you know, infuses um, all of the, gosh, amazing and never-ending animal symbolism and meanings, um, which just makes it just a deeper, more accurate reading I've found. So when we talk about the High Priestess, um, just know, I, I, I have to apologize to you off the bat, I really... <laughs> I really felt like I should do something to look kind of mysterious, so, you know, like those traditional tarot card readers do, because after all, it is the High Priestess. But y'all, I can be, <laughs> there ain't nothing mysterious about Bernadette. I am what I am. <laughs> so, um, you'll just have to take me in my purple. So, let's talk about the High Priestess card and the traditional meanings of the Rider Waite deck. You know, it could easily be said, and just sum it up like, okay, there you go that the High Priestess represents pure spirituality achieved through perfect balance. What does that even mean? And I get it, but that's a lot harder than you might imagine. Because when you talk about perfect balance, has any one of you ever experienced perfect balance? Maybe a few times in your life. Um, and if you have, if you live in perfect balance every day, call me. You are now my guru and, you know, I'll be talking to you. Um, but really the high priestess brings in polar opposites, the action, the reaction, the male, the female. And it does give us the ability to kind of be in control of ourself. And it does reconcile the as above and so below principle. And if you take a look at the two pillars on each side, um, the Boaz, the, the pillars, um, Boaz and uh, I believe it's Yaquin or Jaquin, basically it's severity and mercy. Um, she sits right in the middle of the light and the dark, the white and the black, and she becomes the third pillar. So in numerology, basically what we're looking at is the High Priestess tarot card, in the tarot card meanings, she becomes equal parts of one and one, which combines and, and, and brings those two together in perfect harmony, right? When you take um, the yellow floor that she sits on, that is also something that suggests, that color suggests great uh, harmony because if you think of the sacral chakra, the yellow chakra, it is our chakra that's at our midway point in our body. And there's so much evidence out there that says that, you know, as psychic as we think our third eye is or our crown chakra is, that everything starts in the gut. And there's this whole long uh, theory about the vagal nerve and it being the golden cord. And, you know, when I take a look at the science of it, I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, but when you talk about getting that gut feeling, it's no joke because there's like eight gajillion D neurons in the stomach that aren't in the brain, aren't anyplace else, aren't in your heart. And so for all of these years um, that mankind has been thinking, well, Western mankind, Eastern mankind believes that you get psychic messages through your liver, I believe, liver or kidney, I think it's liver. Um, but Western mankind has always thought it's here, um, you know, and then from the Indian, the Vedic, you know, that kind of thing. But it very well may turn out that our gut um, gets as many messages as anything else. So when you also take a look at this perfect balance thing, and I'm going to hammer the perfect balance thing here for just a minute, and, and I'm going to get to why. When you, when you think of her and, and you see the solar cross, and that's a symbol for divinity, and her crown takes that idea a little bit further, combining the solar disk with the center and the lunar crescents on the side, there's a lot, a lot of moon energy in there, a lot of lunar energy, which is kind of interesting that she would show up on a Tuesday because that is our sacral chakra. So, okay, that makes sense, that balance, that midway point, that intuition that you've probably been experiencing a lot of lately. 
Um, and the reason that I say that is I, Bernadette doesn't talk about politics and please don't talk about it in the comments below. If you put a comment about anything about politics, I love you, but I'll delete your message. But we are coming up to a very, very heated time in this country. And I have been getting so many phone calls and so many emails and Facebook messages about people really thinking they're losing their poo because all of a sudden their spidey senses have gone crazy. Well, that's a reaction to whatever potential danger, 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 Will Robinson, they think or they believe or they might even be intuiting is going to come because of the heightened emotional time that keeps ramping up and ramping up and every day we get closer to it. People are like, zzz, 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 especially sensitives, people that are empaths, people that are energy healers, light workers, readers, you know, at all, um, even without our trying to. I know I experienced it. Y'all, I was on, and thank you for your patience. And again, thank you for your well wishes. I was off camera for a week last week because I had a thing happen in my personal life. Honest to goodness, if somebody had hit me with a speeding train, it would have hurt less, but it took me down like a like a lion takes down a gazelle. And yours truly broke out in shingles. I I never had shingles in my life. I oh my gosh. So I had to get past that, right? Um so in any event, um I I don't really question that that the high priestess came out on a Tuesday because Tuesday is a Mars aggressive go, 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 go energy day. And, and the high priestess is very lunar. But when you take a look at that, aggressive doesn't have to mean anger filled or anything negative. Aggressive can just mean go, 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 go. And that can be in a very positive way. Now, if you're enjoying that during this time, your sensitivity is ramping up. That's awesome. Just make sure that you maintain the balance. This dummy um, who just, you know, you, you, I've got to be in a coma if I'm not, for me to not work, to do, just struggle up, uh, I gotta do something and, and do something to work during the day. I literally have to be in a coma. So last week I was so sick, <laughs> this gal wrote me and I didn't know her. I never heard from her before, but I was tired y'all. And I was on medication and so I wrote her back. I gave her the answer to the question that she had. And I put, I read for this, hey, I hope your surgery goes really well. I'm sending you good healing juju. She sends me back this ginormous long email about, I can't believe you knew that, so on and so forth. And I was like, oh, Lordy, I overstepped my bounds. She didn't ask me for a reading. But I just was, you know, I was writing a lady an email. So I was connected to her psychically. That's how it happens, right? That's What am I going to do about that? That's how it happens. So but there, that's not balanced. And that's where I'm really getting to during this whole thing. It was not balanced. Um, and so as you're going through your go, go, go day, Tuesday, let's get her done day. Balance, balance, chillax, understand that you have now become the high priestess. Understand that you are now the pillar, the one, and the number one is all about the divine number. It's the number of creation. It's the number of God, right? Okay. So just very quickly also about the um, High Priestess card, you know, the moon at her feet in the blue and white robes, that's all about symbolizing purity. And now is when I'm going to go back, at, well, in spiritual devotion, and 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 it's really a suggestion that our subconscious can really help us along the way and lead us to an awareness that it, part of us is divine and eternal. And so this is where I'm going to come back to balance. So with this um, thing that happened to me personal, personally, <clears throat> I'm a triple Scorpio. My whole life I've had to battle going to war the second that somebody comes for me or the second that somebody comes after me, I'm like, hold my beer. <laughs> and I'm looking for, you know, and I'm looking for my accoutrement to wage war. And I certainly would have been well within my rights to do so this time. Certainly. But I really did think of the high priestess when all of this was unfolding. And I, through the power of my, of my spider, and I say mine because she's in my deck, but it's really y'all's deck. It's the animal's deck. It's everybody's deck, right? Through the power of the spider and the high priestess, I was able to sit very quietly and allow, allow everything to unfold 
without going to war. I wanted to see what the truth of the matter was. But most importantly, I wanted to stay in my own integrity. And to me, what that meant was keep my eye on the bigger picture. What is the most important thing here? What, what purpose needs to be served more than Burnett's got hurt feelings because somebody lost their damn mind without getting facts, without asking with whatever they took that much information and spun for no good reason and didn't even give me the professional or personal courtesy or respect of asking. They just spun. Um, but the longer I was quiet, the more, the more that was shown to me and I was shown the truth. And that means that I haven't seen the truth of that person or that situation, maybe ever. It was a tough hit to take, but I'm glad it happened now because I know that I was being protected for moving forward. There's going to be something going on in my personal life and my business life that's going to need me to be protected. And by not having that energy around or those energies around, it certainly does that. So when you start talking about the high priestess, this is not an outside of yourself thing. This card is calling when it comes to you in a reading, it is calling to you to trust your intuition, trust the impressions, trust the images, trust the omens that you receive during meditation. If there is a time of turmoil, if everybody around you is spinning or one person is spinning, you've got to stop. And you've got, see what I did? I became a high priestess. All I'm doing is looking and I'm receiving and I'm staying neutral so that my sacral chakra, my gut can hear what is being said and what is not being said without judgment. Now, <clears throat> when you do this, um, it can make you feel a little bit solitary but you're only going to feel a little solitary for a little while because once you invite that balance, the blending of the, of the upper and the lower, the as above, so below, the blending of the yin and the yang, the blending, the blending, the blending, what you'll find is that y'all, the gratitude, I, I really believe, now let's be clear, I was on, you know, big giant horse pills for the shingles thing. God almighty, do they have to be so big. Um, yes, I was. But shingles are more often than not caused by stress. And when I, I, I don't think that I would have healed so quickly because when I tell you this entire side of my face look like I had leprosy, I ain't kidding. Not kidding. And here we are today. It ain't perfect, but, you know, probably if I didn't call attention to it, y'all wouldn't even know it was there. And the reason that I go into this is, I'm telling you, I walked around with this card in my hand like it was a banky banky. I cried out to Grandmother Spider. I asked High Priestess to show herself through me. I just... I went to a place that I don't know that I've ever gone before, really. And I'm telling you, five days. We're done. We're done here with all this craziness. The leprosy. I call it the leprosy. So um, when, you, when you need wisdom, when I got to the other side of it, I was so grateful for that wisdom that was shown to me. Did it hurt? You betcha. Do I wish I'd never had to go through anything like that? You betcha. But I also wish the other person that was there, other people that were involved in this, would also not have had to go through this. There, It was unnecessary. Completely and totally unnecessary. And that's where the balance comes in, you guys. When you can be, be empathetic for yourself and empathetic for the people that are causing the spin, right? Okay. So how does Spider play into all of this? How does that balance come in with a spider? Okay, now, I don't know about y'all, but when I was a little girl, I dreamed of being Nadia Kamenichi. Really, I did. <laughs> so, my chunky behind tried gymnastics for like a minute until, you know, I, I couldn't even keep my balance on the balance beam. Big giant hunk of wood my mom rigged up for me in the yard. I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm on to some other dream. But spiders teach us balance, if nothing else, because of the way that they walk on their gossamer threads on their webs. It's astounding. And 
you know, in every culture, and I mean every culture, spiders just have such a huge place in their legend, in their lore, in their myths. They are some of the most read about and, and information sought about spirit totem and power animals y'all have ever seen, ever, ever, ever. And when you think about it, it makes sense because if, if you think of a spider's web as a mandala, no matter how tight they get that midpoint, it, there's always some little modicum of beansy, beansy little point that we think of as a portal to other worlds. It's a mandala that if you meditate on it, you can go through that little point, and whoosh, you're out in other worlds. So there is a tremendous amount of knowledge in everything that spider has to teach us because it's it's like it's kind of like a web also represents the the network the creation the the everything is tied to everything else it's 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 part of the great mystery she spider is such an amazing amazing archetype and when you think of the native american lore about grandmother spider who weaves time with her silver threads and you think of the spider wheel or the spider web as a medicine wheel and that spider spirit safeguards us you know our dreams for dream catchers and you know in their history and tradition it's all the energetic patterns that are out there and de patterns of destiny and then to the celts you've got a similar reference um which but, but they they kind of put it as a spiritual achievement so three levels so you've got the bard who weaves the stories and the songs the second is the ovate who is the seer and the guide and then finally there's the druid the accomplished teacher that everybody you know prowls around in the woods trying to get them to tell them their secrets or take them you know under their wing and be their tutor you know that kind of thing so when when you take a good look at today and you take a look at the energies that are ramping up as we get toward that day in November, you know what I'm talking about, I would really encourage you to understand that your ramped up spidey senses are coming to you naturally. There's a reason you're being called to allow those spidey senses to do their work. There's a reason you're being called to study spider energy. There's a reason you're called to be a high priestess. And that's even if you're a guy or you identify as a dude. You know, high priestess is just an archetype, right? And so as you move through your week, if you have a situation that's just super unbalanced, like maybe inside of yourself you're feeling super unbalanced. Okay. Um, you, you don't have to be that. You can focus on, you can meditate on, you can sleep with the card, you can put it by your bedside, maybe journal about it, maybe maybe do a meditation, and those of you that can sketch or anything like that, maybe draw your own version of the High Priestess, maybe find a picture of yourself that you love that looks particularly wise or powerful and really focus on that version of yourself. There's about a jillion B ways that you can keep that, call that energy in and keep it in. Now, if if you feel like high priestess or spider has appeared to you as a spirit animal, well, that means it's time to weave your wishes into reality. And that might come with some lumps. Um, and the reason that I say that is that situation that I went through uh, a week and a half ago or so, man, I had a lot of wishes pe pending on, on that relationship, those relationships. And I was under the understanding that they did as well. And we were all moving in harmony. And when I found out the reality of the situation, again, man, it stung. But I'm so very grateful that I know what is real now because the fantasy was not going to serve anybody. The wish was not going to serve anybody. And it's a shame because had that wish been fulfilled, had those wishes been fulfilled, it would have served a lot more people than just the people involved at the, at the, at the nucleus. A lot more people. So reality can be hard to face. It can. It really can. But as the high priestess, you'll have the power and the strength to do that. Remember, she combines the light and the dark. 
She, she embodies the as above, so below, the black and the white, the male and the female. And she becomes that singular pillar in the middle. You've got this. You totally can do this. If you identify with spider as your totem animal, man, good for you. Because you are a master law of attraction person. You are a master at manifesting reality. You are a master at just, you think it, it's done. It Creating is just as easy for you. Mapping out your own destiny and building your own destiny and your own pathways and your own roads and your own structures. You are some kind of powerful. I tip my hat to you. So. Um, one other thing I want to talk about really quickly is um, before we get to um, spider as a power animal, because really, y'all, when it comes to um, when it comes to power animals, you know, I put in the book and I put in the cards what the animals told me to put that they really felt like most people would need um, that animal as a power animal for what purpose, but really. You can use any kind of um, anything about that animal as the power portion of you, right? It, it can be anything that you need to bring up or unite within your own spirit that has to do with that animal. So in this particular, for instance, um, we've got a wolf spider. And wolf spiders are, uh, you know, they look super scary, but they don't really because they've got those cute little faces. Um, and I know that a lot of people are afraid of spiders, but when you talk about their eyes and you talk about what they're able to see, it is pretty amazing. And when you, when you want to see something, remember today is Sacral Chakra Day. Try not to see things through here. Try not to see things through here. Try not to see things through here. Try to see through your sacral chakra. Really try to, to, to do that. And remember that spiders are sit and wait animals. They don't just jump. They don't just react. Um, you know, jumping spiders do. Okay, yeah, I get that. But really, they're sitting on their webs and they're just like, okay, I got all the time in the world. I'll wait for you to come to me. Y'all... That is a power, that is a show of strength, like holy guacamole. So if you're in a position where you're needing to show strength, don't be running after people. Don't be, Ted, you know, did I, did I, could I, could I, what, 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 stop the nagging. Stop the nagging. Just sit quietly, sit in balance, sit in harmony, and just wait for it to unfold in front of you. Oftentimes, when you don't know what to do, the best thing to do is nothing. So when you want to see, really, really see, when you want to really be that powerful high priestess, that spider energy, that grandmother spider energy, and you're planning your own destiny, which we do every day, whether we know it or not. I mean, when you're thinking about getting a latte, you know, at lunch, that's a destiny. You're, you're planning, I'm going to get the pumpkin spice. You know you're getting the pumpkin spice. Everybody gets pumpkin spice. Um, and if you don't, we got to talk about that. There's something wrong with you. So, so kidding. But um, you, you've already felt how it's going to feel. You already know mm, that first taste. You already know what that's going to do for you physically, mentally, and emotionally. And that's going to affect the rest of your day. Even the tiny choices that we make are big choices in the scheme of things. So I hope this has all been helpful to you. I know this has been a little bit longer. Um, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Pick up your copy of the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. And um, the most important thing for you guys that I wish for you every day is that you stay wild.